The word cell is derived from the Latin word cellula, which means a little room. An English scientist, Robert Hooke in 1665 discovered and named the cells. In 1674, Anton von Leeuwenhoek, a Dutch microscopist, made an improved microscope and using this microscope he discovered the free living cells in pond water for the first time. However Hooke had only seen the thickened walls of the cells and not the substance contained within these walls. In 1831, a Scottish botanist, Robert Brown discovered and named the nucleus in plant cells. J. Perkinge, a Czech animal physiologist, in 1839 gave the term protoplasm for the living fluid substance present inside the cell. In 1866, Hickel established that the nucleus was responsible for storing and transmitting hereditary characters. Cell theory. In 1838, Jacob Matthias Schleden, a German botanist, first proposed the idea that all plants consist of cells. A year later, in 1839, Theodor Schwanner, a German zoologist, independently asserted that all animals and plants are made up of cells. This joint finding forms the basis of the cell theory. The cell theory was refined further in 1855, when another German biologist, A. Virchow, presented the idea that all cells arise from pre-existing cells. Thus, the cell theory comprises of the following postulates. 1. All organisms are composed of cells and cell products. 2. All metabolic reactions take place in cells. Thus, Cells are structural and functional units of life. 3. All cells arise from pre-existing cells only. 4. Every organism starts its life as a single cell. Viruses are an exception to cell theory. What are living organisms made up of? The cell is the basic structural and functional unit of living organisms. Many organisms, such as bacteria, both archaebacteria and eubacteria, protozoa, example amoeba, and yeasts, consists of single cells, called unicellular organisms, that are capable of independent self-replication. More complex organisms, called multicellular organisms, are composed of collections of cells that function in a coordinated manner, with different cells specialized to perform the particular tasks. Let us take an inner fleshy leaf of onion bulb. With the help of a set of forceps, we can peel off the skin, called the epidermis, it is one cell thick, from the concave side, inner layer, of the onion. This layer can be put immediately in a petri dish, a glass dish, or watch glass containing water. This will avoid the peel getting folded and getting dry also. Let us take a glass slide, put a drop of clean water on it and transfer a piece of peel from the petri dish or watch glass to the slide. Make sure that peel is perfectly flat on the slide. You may need a thin camel hair paint brush to help you to transfer the peel. At this stage put a drop of iodine solution on the piece of onion peel followed by a cover slip. In this way you have prepared a temporary mount of onion peel. You can observe this slide under the low and high power of a light compound microscope. If you prepare temporary mounts of onion peels with different sizes, you will observe that they all have similar small structures. These structures look similar to each other and together they form a big structure such as an onion bulb. These small microscopic structures that you see in an onion peel are the basic building units of onion bulb. These structures are called cells. Not only onion but all organisms that you see around are made up of cells. Difference between unicellular and multicellular organisms. Unicellular organisms. One an unicellular organism is represented by a single cell. Two all activities of the organisms are performed by a single cell. Three there is no division of labor as the single cell perform all life activities. Four reproduction consumes a single cell. Five the lifespan of an individual is short. Multicellular organisms. 1. A multicellular organism consists of large number of cells. 2. A single cell performs one or few activities of the organisms. 3. Cells are specialized to perform different functions of the body so that there is a division of labor within cells. 4. 
Only some cells of the body called germ cells take part in reproduction. Other cells, somatic cells, remain intact. 5. The lifespan of an individual is long. Division of labor. An organism such as a human being can have cells of different kind, example, sperm, leukocyte, white blood cell, osteocyte, bone cell, muscle cell, nerve cell, fat cell, etc. This is due to the fact that there is a division of labor within multicellular organisms, example, human beings. This means that different parts of human body perform different functions. Human body has heart to pump blood, stomach to digest food, skeletal muscles to perform movement and locomotion and so on. Heart has a special type of muscle cells called cardiac muscles which contract rapidly. Rhythmically and tirelessly, they never fatigue during lifetime of an organism. Stomach has special cells such as mucus cells to secrete mucus for lubricating the food, zymogen cells, or chief cells, to secrete a proenzyme of protein digestive enzyme, the pepsin, called pepsigen, parietal cells or oxyntic cells to secrete hydrochloric acid activating pepsinogen into functional pepsin and also for killing germs of food. Skeletal muscles are striated and voluntary muscles, that is their contraction depends on your will or control. Due to this property of skeletal muscle cells, you are able to move your hands and ten fingers in desired ways. Like the human body, the cell itself has got division of labor. In fact, each cell has got certain specific components within it known as cell organelles. Each kind of cell organelle performs a special function, example making of new material in the cell such as protein synthesis by ribosomes, food, glucose starch, synthesis by chloroplasts, clearing up the waste substances from the cell by the lysosomes, etc. Thus, a cell is able to live and perform its functions because of these organelles. These organelles together constitute the basic building blocks called cells. Quite interestingly, all cells are designed to have the same basic structure, no matter what their function is or what organism they are found in. What is the structural organization of a cell? Though their shape, size and activities vary, all cells have following three major functional regions. The cell membrane or plasma membrane and cell wall. The nucleus. The cytoplasm. Diffusion. Some substances, molecules, ions, such as carbon dioxide, oxygen, water, etc., can move across the plasma membrane through a process called diffusion. These substances are of very small size, so, they diffuse readily through the phospholipid layer of the plasma membrane. To understand this process, let us perform. Thus, diffusion is the spontaneous movement of molecules from a region of high concentration to one of lower concentration, until uniform concentration is finally achieved. Diffusion is faster in the gaseous phase than in liquids and solids. Example A gas such as carbon dioxide gets accumulated in high concentration inside a cell. In the external environment of cell, the concentration of carbon dioxide is low as compared to inside of the cell. As soon as there is a difference of concentration of carbon dioxide, inside and outside of a cell, carbon dioxide moves out of the cell, that is, from region of its high concentration to region of low concentration by the process of diffusion. In a similar way, oxygen enters the cell by the process of diffusion when the level or concentration of oxygen inside the cell decreases. Osmosis Water also follows the law of diffusion. The spontaneous movement of water molecules through a selective permeable membrane is called osmosis. The movement of water across the plasma membrane of the cell is affected by amount of substance dissolved in water. Thus, osmosis is the passage of water from a region of high water concentration through a semi-permeable membrane to a region of low water concentrations. Osmosis is purely a mechanical diffusion process by which cells absorb water without spending any amount of energy. Let us see what will happen if you put an animal cell or plant cells into a solution of sugar or salt prepared in water. If the medium surrounding the cell has a higher water concentration than the cell, that is, 
If solution is a very dilute solution, the cell will gain water by osmosis. Such a dilute solution is called hypotonic solution. While water molecules are free to pass across the plasma membrane in both directions, more water will enter the cell than leave. Overall, result is that water enters the cell. In such a situation, cell is likely to swell up, that is, become inflated or turgid. Such swollen RBCs may ultimately burst, that is, hemolyzed. If the medium surrounding the cell is of exactly the same water concentration as the cell, there will be no net movement of water across the plasma membrane. Such a solution is called isotonic solution. Example, Ringer's solution is an isotonic solution for the animal cells. In this case, water crosses the plasma membrane in both directions, but the amount going in is the same as the amount going out, so there is no overall movement of water. In such a situation, the cell will maintain the same size. If the medium has a lower concentration of water than the cell, that is if it is very concentrated solution, the cell will lose water by osmosis. Such a concentrated solution is called hypertonic solution. In this case too, water crosses the plasma membrane in both directions, but this time more water leaves the cell than enters it. Therefore, the cell will shrink. In this situation, plant cell is said to be plasmolyzed and animal cells, red blood cells, is said to crenated. Cell wall. In plant cells, there occurs a rigid cell wall which lies outside the plasma membrane. Cell wall is non-living and freely permeable and is secreted by the cell itself for the protection of its plasma membrane and cytoplasm. It determines the shape of a plant cell and prevents desiccation of cells. It is made up of a fibrous polysaccharide, carbohydrate, called cellulose. The plant cell wall, thus, consists of tiny cellulose fibers called microfibrils, glued together by a mixture of polysaccharides. Each microfibril is made up of thousands of cellulose molecules bound together by pectins and hemicellulose. Functions of a cell wall Cell wall of plants performs the following functions. It permits the plant cell to become turgid. As water enters the vacuole through osmosis, the plant cell expands. The cell wall has to be strong enough to resist this expansion and so enables the cell to become turgid. It provides mechanical strength to support the cell. The cellulose microfibrils are very strong. The strength may be further increased by the addition of lignin in tissues such as xylem. In cells such as cholenchyma, extracellulose is added to the cell wall to increase mechanical support. It is freely permeable to water and substances in solution. It has narrow pores, called pits, through which fine strands of cytoplasm, called plasmodesmata, are able to pass. These intercellular connections allow exchange of materials between the living cell contents. The cell walls of adjacent cells are glued together by the middle lamella. Middle lamella is a jelly-like substance made up of calcium and magnesium pectate. Plasmolysis When a living plant cell loses water through osmosis, there is a shrinkage or contraction of the protoplasm away from the cell wall. This phenomenon is called plasmolysis. Thus, if a living plant cell is immersed in a concentrated sugar solution, the concentration of water molecule inside the cell will be higher than outside. As a result, water will move by osmosis from the higher water potential inside the cell to the lower water potential outside. The cell contents will shrink away from the cell wall and it will be plasmolyzed. The nucleus is a large, centrally located spherical cellular component. It is bounded by two nuclear membranes, both forming a nuclear envelope. Nuclear envelope encloses a space between two nuclear membranes and is connected to a system of membranes called the ER, endoplasmic reticulum. The nuclear envelope separates the nucleus from the cytoplasm. The nuclear envelope contains many pores, the nuclear pores, and encloses the liquid ground substance, the nucleoplasm. Nuclear pores allow transfer of materials between the nucleoplasm and the cytoplasm. Within nucleoplasm two types of nuclear structures are embedded the nucleolus and chromatin material. 
the nucleolus may be one or more in number and is not bounded by any membrane. It is rich in protein and RNA, ribonucleic acid, molecules and acts as the site for ribosome formation. Nucleolus is known as factory of ribosomes. Ribosomes are helpful in protein synthesis in the cytoplasm. The chromatin material is a thin, thread-like intertwined mass of chromosome material and composed of the genetic substance DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, and proteins. Basically chromatin is formed of repeating subunits, the nucleosomes, each of which has a DNA molecule coiled around the disk of histones. DNA stores all the information necessary for the cell to function, to grow and to reproduce further cells of the next generation. Distinct segments of DNA are called genes. The chromatin is condensed into two or more thick ribbon-like chromosomes during the division of cell. Prokaryotic cells Prokaryotes These organisms have primitive and incomplete cells. Thus, they contain prokaryotic cells in their body structure. Prokaryotic cells have all three basic structures of a typical cell but lack nuclear membranes around their genetic substances, DNA. Nuclear material of a prokaryotic cell consists of a single chromosome which is in direct contact with cytoplasm. Here the undefined nuclear region in the cytoplasm is called nucleoid, that is there is no nuclear membrane. In a prokaryotic cell other membrane-bound organelles, such as mitochondria, are also absent. Ribosomes, however, are present in prokaryotic cells. The prokaryotes include archaebacteria, bacteria and cyanobacteria, which earlier called blue-green algae. Eukaryotic cells Eukaryotes These have advanced and complete cells. These cells contain membrane-bound nuclei and other cellular organelles and are called eukaryotic cells. Such cells are found in unicellular and multicellular plants and animals and contain plasma membrane, nucleus, DNA and cytoplasm with ribosomes and cellular organelles such as mitochondria. Cytoplasm The part of the cell which occurs between the plasma membrane and nuclear envelope is called the cytoplasm. The inner granular mass of the cytoplasm is often called endoplasm, while the outer, clearer, glossy, layer is called cell cortex or ectoplasm. Cytoplasm consists of an aqueous ground substance, the cytosol, containing a variety of cell organelles and other inclusions such as insoluble waste and storage products. Cytosol. It is the soluble part of cytoplasm. It forms the ground substance or background material of the cytoplasm and is located between the cell organelles. Cytosol contains a system of protein fibers called cytoskeleton, but otherwise appears transparent and structureless in the electron microscope. Cytosol is about 90% water and forms a solution which contains all biochemicals of life. Some of these are ions and small molecules forming true solutions such as salts, sugars, amino acids, nucleotides, vitamins and dissolved gases. Others are large molecules such as proteins which form colloidal solution. Cell organelles A cell has to perform different functions with the help of its various membrane-bound organelles. It has to synthesize substances, example protein synthesis by ribosomes, lipid synthesis on the surface of smooth endoplasmic reticulum, SA, photosynthesis of food by chloroplasts. It has to secrete cell products. It has to digest those substances which are taken up by the cell during endocytosis. Such intracellular digestion is done by enzymes of lysosomes. It has to generate energy, example synthesis of energy-rich ATP, adenosine triphosphate, by mitochondria. Membrane is a remarkable cellular structure. Every cell is bounded by a membrane and thus, keeps its own contents separate from the external environment. Larger or more evolved cells, or cells from multicellular organisms, have a great deal of metabolic activities to support their complicated structure or function. To keep metabolic activities of different types separate from each other, cells have membrane-bound organelles within themselves. Cell organelles are small organs of the cell and are found embedded in the cytosol. 
They form living part of the cell and each of them has a definite shape, structure, and function. Examples of such organelles are nucleus, mitochondria, chloroplasts, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, lysosomes, ribosomes, etc. We have already discussed about the nucleus in a previous section. In this section, we will discuss the cellular organelles one by one. Endoplasmic reticulum inside the cell there exists a membranous network enclosing a fluid-filled lumen which almost fills up the intracellular cavity. It is called endoplasmic reticulum or ER. At one end ER is connected to the outer membrane of the nucleus and at the other end to the plasma membrane. ER occurs in three forms, cisternae, vesicles and tubules, rough endoplasmic reticulum, RER, with ribosomes attached on its surface for synthesizing proteins. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum, sir, which is without ribosomes and is meant for secreting lipids. The ER is absent in the red blood cells of mammals. Functions. It forms supporting skeletal framework of the cell. ER provides a pathway for the distribution of nuclear material from one cell to the other. Certain enzymes present in smooth ER synthesize fats, lipids, steroids and cholesterol. Rough ER is concerned with the transport of proteins which are synthesized by ribosomes on their surface. Smooth ER of liver of vertebrates helps in detoxification. It metabolizes various toxic or poisonous substances such as drugs, aspirin, insecticides, DDT, petroleum products and pollutants. These toxic substances make their entry in animals' body through food, air or water. Smooth ER plays an important role in the biosynthesis of glycolipids, phospholipids and cholesterol. These lipids are used in the formation of plasma or cell membrane and various steroid hormones. Hormones are either steroids or proteins. Smooth ER synthesized steroid hormones such as estrogen, testosterone and cortisol. Golgi apparatus is absent in bacteria, blue-green algae much your sperms and red blood cells of mammals and other animals. The Golgi apparatus arises from the membrane of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, which in turn originates from the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The proximal Golgi succules are formed by fusion of ER-derived vesicles, while distal succules give their all to vesicle formation and disappear. Thus, Golgi succules are constantly and rapidly renewed. Functions the main function of the Golgi apparatus is secretae. Golgi apparatus acts as a way station or assembly area for the storage, processing and packaging of various cellular secretions. It packages materials synthesized in the cell and dispatches them either to intracellular targets such as plasma membrane and lysosomes. It produces vacuoles or secretae vesicles which contain cellular secretions, example, enzymes, proteins, cellulose, melanin pigment, lactoprotein of milk. Golgi apparatus is also involved in the synthesis of cell wall, plasma membrane and lysosomes. Lysosomes are simple tiny spherical sac-like structures evenly distributed in the cytoplasm. Each lysosome is a small vesicle surrounded by a single membrane and contains powerful enzymes. These enzymes are capable of digesting or breaking down all organic materials. Lysosomal enzymes are made by RER. Functions. Lysosomes serve as intracellular digestive system, hence, called digestive bags. They destroy any foreign material which enter the cell such as bacteria and virus. In this way they protect the cells from bacterial infection. Lysosomes also remove the worn out and poorly working cellular organelles by digesting them to make way for their new replacements. In this way, they remove the cell debris and are also known as demolition squads, scavengers and cellular housekeepers. Thus, lysosomes form a kind of garbage disposal system of the cell. During breakdown of cell structure, when the cell gets damaged, lysosomes may burst and the enzymes eat up their own cells. Therefore, lysosomes are also known as suicide bags of a cell. Mitochondria nature and occurrence. The mitochondria, singular, mitochondrion, 
are tiny bodies of varying shapes, cylindrical, rod-shaped, spherical, distributed in the cytoplasm. Each mitochondrion is bounded by a double membrane envelope. Outer membrane is porous. The inner membrane is thrown into folds and, therefore, have an area several times the surface of area of the outer membrane. These folds are called cristae and are studded, dotted, with small rounded bodies known as F, particles or oxysomes. The interior cavity of the mitochondria is filled with a proteinaceous, gel-like, matrix which contains a few small-sized ribosomes, a circular DNA molecule and phosphate granules. Mitochondria are absent in bacteria and the red blood cells of mammals. Functions Mitochondria are sites of cellular respiration. They use molecular oxygen from air to oxidize the carbohydrates and fats, lipids, present in the cell to carbon dioxide and water vapor. Oxidation releases energy, a portion of which is used to form ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Since the mitochondria synthesize energy-rich compounds, ATP, they are known as powerhouse of the cell. The energy stored in ATP is used by the cell. Plastids nature and occurrence. Plastids occur in most plant cells and are absent in animal cells. Like the mitochondria, the plastids also have their own genome and ribosomes. They are self-replicating organelles like the mitochondria, that is, they have the power to divide. Plastids are of following three types, one chromoplasts. Colored plastids, except green color. Two chloroplasts. Green colored plastids. Three leucoplasts. The colorless plastids. Vacuoles. Nature and occurrence. Vacuoles are fluid-filled or solid-filled and membrane-bounded spaces. They are a kind of storage sacs. In animal cells, the vacuoles if present are small and temporary. They store water, glycogen and proteins. The vacuolar membrane is typically a single unit membrane and is often associated with the maintenance of water balance, example they serve as osmoregulatory organelles in protozoans, or ingestion of nutrient material, food vacuole. Thus, food vacuole of a single-celled organism such as amoeba or paramecium, contains the food item that the animal has consumed.